My name is Dr. Kenneth Christie. I'm the program head and a professor in the human security and peace building graduate programs at Royal Roads University. And I am also the president of the Confederation of the University Faculty Associations of British Columbia or CUFA BC. CUFA BC is the provincial voice for more than 5,500 university professors, instructors, lecturers, and academic librarians at the five research universities across the province. We work with the faculty associations at Royal Roads University, Simon Fraser University, the University of British Columbia, the University of Northern British Columbia, and the University of Victoria. I would like to respectfully acknowledge that the land on which Kufa BC's office resides is on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples. We acknowledge with respect the diverse histories and cultures of the Squamish, the Tsleil-Waututh, the Musqueam, and the Stoyo nations of this province. We recognize the inherent indigenous rights and title, the implementation without qualification of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and our support for the 94 calls to action by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. So we are here today to represent or to present the winners of the 2023 CUFA BC Distinguished Academics Awards. Each year since 1995, CUFA BC honors the outstanding scholarship and public policy contributions of distinguished academics in BC, academics whose research and scholarly activity have made significant contributions to the community beyond the academy. We believe that the ideas that flow from universities contribute in significant ways to the public good to our citizenry and to a democratic landscape, our intellectual life and our economy. The awards demonstrate the necessity and vitality of public universities, research and scholarly activity. So I'm pleased to present the winner of the 2023 Kufa BC Paz Budendal Career Achievement Award to Dr. Jonathan Moore. This award recognizes contributions to the community over a lifelong career dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge and truth, advocacy and building community and relationships. Dr. Moore joins us today to talk about his research. Dr. Jonathan Moore, Professor, Simon Fraser University and the Departments of Biological Sciences as well as Resource and Environmental Management. I think you could tell me a little bit about your research interests, Dr. Moore, briefly. Yeah, I'm an aquatic ecologist, and so I study wet ecosystems with particular focus on the watersheds that salmon call home. So my team and I, we call ourselves the Salmon Watersheds Lab. Wow. And we study uh, these ecosystems, how they work, how they're changing, and how we can steward them. Uh, so your nominators have described your work as literally changing the dialogue and even the course of events on contentious issues like energy development that affects aquatic environments. So you're a champion for salmon, for rivers and estuaries. Could you tell me a bit about your work in this field and how you challenge uh, some of the most significant issues facing aquatic ecosystems and BC salmon watersheds? Yeah, so these, these ecosystems do have a lot of pressures. They have a lot of challenges and they don't really have a voice. And so, as a scientist, what I try to do with my team and collaborators is try to understand these pressures and then try to you know, bring that information to light and have that information feed into hard decisions and important decisions, and sometimes it's controversial. And so over the years, we've worked on um, you know, different pressures, whether it's mining or forestry or large industry developments. And um, you know, hopefully our science has helped clarify these challenges and help point a path forward. You have, a, you have a remarkable record of engaging with government regulators, with First Nations communities, with civil society and international leaders. Uh, tell me about your experience in kind of walking the line uh, between robust fundamental research, environmental protection, and affecting credible policy change. Yeah, so, so I am a scientist, and so that's sort of my foundation as I try to never deviate from the, the data and, and what it says. 
you know, with that in mind, though, you know, the data doesn't speak for itself oftentimes. And it, mm -hmm. it's sometimes really important to try to make that science accessible right. and to try to bring it to the people that need it. And so a lot of my work is, you know, not necessarily just doing the research, but thinking about who needs that research and exactly what pieces of information are needed and by whom. And so it's, you know, it, there's a lot of engagement, a lot of thinking with about you know what's needed and, and listening and listening to the concerns of people and and the the different sort of um, voices in these complex landscapes. Right. And and what about some of the projects are you most excited about looking into the future? What would you say was this kind of priorities now yeah. coming up in research? One of the things that I'm really motivated about is really thinking about climate change and what do we do about it. Mm -hmm. And so climate change is this enormous global threat, pressure, and it's you know unfolding as we speak and really pressuring natural systems and causing harm to people. And I think there's obvious global need for climate action and reducing greenhouse gas emissions. But the fact is that most conservation and management decisions are made locally. And so even as we take this global action, I think there's real urgent need for science that looks to the future and, and says, okay, these systems are changing, these places that we live are changing, these resources that we need, they're changing, what do we do about it? And so I have a series of projects that's trying to do this type of forward-looking science that can then sort of inform and catalyze and inspire forward-looking action. So for example, uh, the ocean's rising with sea, with sea level rise and climate change, and that's, um, you know, going to inundate a lot of coastal marshlands and wetlands. Right. And so I'm in a big collaborative project where we're looking into the future and asking ourselves, well, how can nearby habitat be restored so that the whole system can adapt and migrate with that sea level rise? And then another um, sort of similar veined or themed project is thinking about glacier retreat. And so glaciers are retreating and salmon are actually finding these new habitats as the glaciers march up these river valleys. And so then the question is, well, how do we steward these habitats? Right. Even if they don't have, hold salmon now, how do we make sure they're protected as important options for the future? So I think this type of work is really critical and urgent now to look for those opportunities for proactive conservation, proactive management for a resilient future. That's a great answer and, and, and thanks for that. I, I'm wondering why, why do you think it's really important to engage in that kind of research uh, in terms of what it means to the public interest? Mm. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the public is a part of these systems too. We live in these watersheds where we study. And so what happens here affects us right. and, you know, you go down to the rivers during the salmon runs and there's people fishing, there's kids that might be running up and down looking for the salmon. And so, you know, the health of these systems is linked to our own well-being. And so I'm really motivated to do work that links into that, that tries to sort of help um, chart a course forward into the future. And I think these days, yeah, there are a lot of challenges. And so one of the things that science can offer, I believe, is not just what the problems are, but also what the paths forward are. What the solutions are. Exactly. Yeah, you. So you've mentored many undergraduate and uh, graduate students. What do you see as key priorities for the next generation of leaders graduating from BC universities? Yeah, I feel really thankful that I've gotten a chance to mentor mm -hmm. so many uh -huh. uh, the emerging scientists. I think it was around 90 to 100 different grad students and undergrads I've mentored over the years. And each one, you know, brings something new and it's fun to sort of see them go off into the world and, you know, mm -hmm. do their own thing. And I think that these days education is really critical to their sort of progression, but it's not just about the knowledge they gain. Right. It's also about the tools they gain. And it's also about how they do it. It's sort of thinking about how the work they do fits into the sort of broader social moral construct that's such you know, a key part. So environmental challenges aren't just about the environment, they're also about environmental justice and social justice. So I think there's a key role for education systems to help sort of put the research in the broader societal context and sort right. of look outside of the universities for that engagement. And I think students these days need those tools, they need those sort of approaches, and they also need hope 
And I think that that's sort of a key part of university training these days. Wow, absolutely. How, how does your work support equity, diversity and inclusion in post-secondary education and research? The places where I get a chance to work, these salmon watersheds, they're places that indigenous peoples have stewarded for millennia. And so the research that we're doing, we try to really think carefully about um, how to do that work in the right way. Right. And fundamentally, all of our research is done with, in collaboration with different First Nations to varying degrees. And, and I think by doing that work collaboratively, we can not only you know, ask the questions that are the most important, but also can collect the data together such that it can really sort of lift up the people that live closest to the landscapes that need those resources the most. And so I think this, you know, by connecting the research to the communities that are really sort of embedded in these systems is a place where the science can help advance, you know, not just knowledge, but also well-being. How do you think your research has affected people living in, in British Columbia? How has it given them some meaning in that sense? Yeah. So my, my vision is to work towards thriving watersheds for salmon and people. And I think if we can get that right, we can get a lot of things right. And so I'm hopeful and that my work has taken us towards that direction in some ways. Uh, maybe the waters are a little cleaner in some places. Maybe there's more fish for future generations in some places. Maybe there's more habitat for salmon to use into this uncertain future. Do you think there's anything else you would like to say to the nominators of the CUFA BC Selection Committee? Yeah. It's a wonderful application, well-deserved award. But is there anything you would like to say to them? Or? Yeah, this is an incredible honor. And to the nominators, uh, you know, they're, in, they're people that deeply inspire me. And so their sort of support really is humbling and, and means a lot to me. And to the selection committee, I just really want to express my appreciation. It's deeply motivating to, to receive this, and I very much appreciate it. Well, thank you for joining me today to talk about your work. Uh, I want to congratulate you again on being awarded the 2023 KUFA BC Paz Budendal uh, Career Achievement Award winner as part of our annual Distinguished Academics Award Series. And I look forward to uh, following your continued successes at Simon Fraser University. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>